Before I get into this video, I wanted to say that I've received comments saying that I'm being critical about things happening in sim racing at the moment without saying much about the positives. The fact is that I love sim racing and I'm incredibly passionate about it and want it to grow as big as it can be. Starting back in 2013 as a driver, I've done many things over the years from event organization and marketing, commentary, broadcast hosting, public activations and more. I've seen a lot of changes happen and I feel I have a decent idea of the direction the sport is heading and where it can go, but also things it needs to be careful of and perhaps needs to be brought to light. In some of these videos that I put out that may seem more negative, simply note I am trying to bring these issues to light so they can be addressed and maybe if seen by the right person, some ideas can be developed to steer the ship clear of rocky waters. Disclaimer out of the way, let's get into today's video. For those competing in the real world, one of the most significant accomplishments you could ever find yourself having is being a works or factory driver for a manufacturer. You know you get the most up-to-date technology and advancements for your particular cars every single time you hit the track, and that the people around you are incredibly competent at what they do. Whether it's Mercedes AMG in Formula 1, Aston Martin Racing in the World Endurance Championship, or Porsche, BMW, or even Corvette in the IMSA Championship, it's very much a badge of honour and one that a lot of drivers aspire to hold. Because the luxury and glory of being a driver for one of these highly established teams with all its added perks make its way over to sim racing? The answer is a very compelling yes because we are already seeing it happen. As of this season of F1 Esports, we have officially got every single official Formula 1 team competing with Ferrari finally joining the fold with their Ferrari Driver Academy team. However, they are already beginning to approach sim racing quite seriously despite their relatively late involvement compared to others in F1 Esports. On the official Ferrari Esports Twitch channel, the drivers can regularly be seen competing in organised training sessions for F1 Esports, but also Assetto Corsa Competizione, throwing the in-game Ferrari 488 GT3 around. Just months after beginning, they are starting to diversify out to different platforms, and right now, well, I wouldn't blame anybody watching this wondering what the big deal is. Any sim racing team would like to diversify out. Why can't they? Well, they absolutely can, but the interesting thing for myself is that they can progress so much quicker than any other sim racing team out there possibly could, and I just worry that the growth of these real-world teams that are transferring into esports could just about kill off a large number of sim racing-only teams. I'll explain. The fact is, if you get a team like Ferrari coming into the esports world, they really can do very little wrong. They have a juggernaut of a following already, so their popularity will be very quickly established, and the team before they even do a single race will hold a considerable amount of prestige to drive for them. So all of the best drivers out there if offered a spot will likely jump at the opportunity because more than likely, it will be much more profitable for them in a number of ways. We've already seen very similar situations happen back in late 2017. Frederick Rasmussen and Isaac Price stole the show in the 2017 Blancpain GT series on iRacing, and with this, made themselves two of the more prominent names in the esports world, and for them, the timing was perfect. Right as they were busy winning just about everything they could, one of the powerhouses in gaming, G2 Esports, were looking to make their way into sim racing in collaboration with Fernando Alonso and Logitech G. For Frederick and Isaac, along with Chen Bolokabasi, Yoni Tomla, Nesta Garcia, and Sebastian Job, who were all rated as some of the top drivers on the platform at the time, all of them, with the exception of Garcia and Tomla, were competing for a sim racing team already. Predominantly, Core Motorsports, who are a sim racing team who boast a vast history and amount of success behind them, dating right back to the Live for Speed days. However, for these six drivers, they were given a choice between staying with Core Motorsports or moving over to G2 Esports. And the move for them was obvious, and in late February of 2018, the move was announced. But this is the scary prospect. These very established sim racers moved from a very established sim racing team to go join another group who had never even turned a single lap up to that point. The only thing that the team had going for it was a huge name behind it. But for a lot of drivers, that is all you would need. G2 has since gone through a transitional period through to becoming Red Bull Racing Esports, the official team of the Red Bull Racing Formula 1 team. 
even in the 2019 peak antifreeze iRacing series, iRacing introduced a draft format where drivers would be drafted into real world teams such as Rash Fenway, Wood Brothers and Dale Earnhardt Inc racing teams. My issue with this is for the sim racing teams that were there from the very start. So many of us have established teams and have run for them in the last few years, slowly developing history and recognition. But these sim racing teams could quickly find themselves swallowed up and covered up by these real world teams and I just worry a little bit for the history of the sport. Coanda Simsport is an excellent example of a victim of the draft format as in late 2018 they had hired Keegan Leahy and Bobby Zelensky to race for Coanda in the peak antifreeze iRacing series to get two Coanda cars on the grid. But despite them hiring two of the biggest talents in oval racing, they never got a single Coanda car on the grid with both Keegan and Bobby getting drafted into other teams. For the two drivers, Nothing massively changed for how they go about their business, but in terms of growing exposure for Kawanda on one of the biggest stages, if not the biggest stage in Irison currently, they lost out with their iconic white, purple and orange not being seen at all. The drivers themselves can absolutely benefit from these real world propositions though, with a very recent news story backing this up, as Brad Jones Racing E-Series competitor Jake Burden having actually secured himself a test drive in the Brad Jones Racing Holden ZB Commodore for a future test date, which would likely have never happened if it wasn't for the real world teams being involved in sim racing. At the end of the day, the competitors are the stars of eSports over the teams themselves, but I know for a fact that I wouldn't be the only one sad to see a large number of other series move down this path, as well with the sim racing teams as we know them slowly being confined to nothing more than the history books. We need the Coanda Sim Sports, Team Red Lines and pure racing teams of the world to keep on surviving and being able to compete and fight against these real world teams and make their mark on the series. But when series like the Peak Antifreeze Irising series limit how much a team can promote themselves and their sponsors, it can be a tiny bit concerning if this is going to become a growing trend. I'm always looking to the future with sim racing, and I hope that it keeps growing consistently, but we have to make sure the past is protected as well. Corporate businesses with the financial backing and big name entities such as Ferrari, McLaren, Red Bull Racing, Porsche and even Williams are already making their name well known in sim racing. And that is fantastic to see the positive support being thrown behind our once niche sport. It shows that they recognize our growth and potential, which many of us have known for so long that it had. And with these big names in the sport, our ability to grow and improve is only being heightened. Along with their legion of fans that may flock over to come watch the race broadcast and live streams, comes the team's experience and know-how over a number of years in real world racing, so many of the issues we see today in sim racing are actually not all too unfamiliar to those that have happened in the very beginnings of real world motorsports either. So plenty of solutions and direction could be provided should the right people get in contact with one another and that is really a positive thing. But just don't forget about the little guys that were there decades before anybody else came along. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for your support on the videos recently once again. I know I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but man oh man have these videos responses gone way above my expectations. I really do appreciate every single person who is watching right to the end of these videos and clicking like and even being a downright legend and clicking subscribe. Thank you all so much and I shall see you all in the next video. Peace.